Hi, this is Vincent, and welcome to Right of Way, a vlog about traffic, transport, and road safety. Today, what I'd like to discuss are some recent efforts by our traffic management authorities to try to improve traffic uh, in Metro Manila. And I start with uh, an announcement by the president uh, several weeks back, where he said that by December of this year, travel time between Cubao and Makati uh, will be reduced down to five minutes. Um, I won't go into that, but just to say that in order for that to happen, a vehicle has to violate the speed limit uh, and travel anywhere from 110 to 120 kilometers per hour to make it in five minutes. But I won't discuss that. What I'd like to discuss are two proposals coming out of the MMDA. Um, and these two proposals are rooted in their performance indicators. If you take a look at the budget proposal of the MMDA, uh, they have their performance indicators. This is how they will assess whether they are doing their jobs or not. And the performance indicators are separated into two broad categories. The first one is flood control. Uh, we won't talk about that. But the second one revolves around traffic management. And I think uh, I want to discuss this. There are three performance indicators under traffic management. First is the reduction in the number of road accidents on major thoroughfares. I think that's a good indicator, and I hope that the MMDA can actually achieve uh, this performance indicator. The, other, uh, the second uh, performance indicator is a reduction in the number of obstructions on major thoroughfares. And again, this is a good uh, performance indicator. Uh, but I have to say that the MMDA is partly to blame for obstructions on the road uh, because of their orange and uh, cement barriers. Uh, these barriers are strewn uh, all over our uh, city streets um, and they are not visible at night and all the more on a rainy night uh, because they are not lit and they're not retroreflective. So to the MMDA, please take note of this. If you really want to reduce the number of uh, obstructions, take a look at your orange and cement barriers. But it's the third performance indicator that I think is a bit problematic, and that is a reduction in the average travel times along major thoroughfares. And I think this is problematic because the first question that arises is a reduction in travel times for whom, right? And my guess is they're looking at reduction of travel times for private vehicles. And I think this is the wrong performance indicator. And this explains why the MMDA is hell-bent on reducing the number of vehicles on the road, because that will help their metric, that will help uh, their performance indicator. So if we take a look, if they really want to uh, improve travel times, I mean, this is a drastic measure, but if they really want to improve travel times, is it, if this is really their performance indicator, then what they should do is a reverse color uh, number coding. So instead of disallowing vehicles with, ending, with plates ending in 1 and 2 on Monday, 3 and 4 on Tuesday, etc., they do the reverse. They only allow vehicles that have plates ending in 1 and 2 on Mondays, 3 and 4 on Tuesdays, etc. And by doing this reverse number coding, they will actually reduce the number of private vehicles by 80% roughly. Uh, and therefore, they can achieve their performance indicators of reducing travel times. But I think this is problematic because that's not really the problem. Uh, it has been said, it's been reported, that anywhere from 70 to 80% of the people on the roads of Metro Manila are taking some form of public transportation. Uh, which means the remaining th uh, 20 to 30 percent are in private vehicles. And when your focus is on improving travel times for private vehicles, you're only improving the situation for the 20 to 30 percent. You're not improving the situation for the 70 to 80 percent of people who are riding public transportation. There's this photo I saw um, which shows uh, a portion of EDSA where all the buses are squeezed into uh, the two rightmost lanes, the so-called PUV lanes, leaving the three left lanes free for vehicles. And in the photo, there's actually only one vehicle in the photo. And that photo expresses everything that's wrong with the MMDA's performance indicator. 
because if they want to reduce travel times, that's what ETS is going to look like. But what does that do? That causes the commute times of the people in the buses to increase. And sure, the people, the private vehicles uh, on the left three lanes, yeah, their, their travel times have, have improved. But that's not really the problem. The problem is that we really need to uh, decrease commute times for the 70 to 80 percent of the people who are commuting. Now, there are two policies that the MMDA has proposed. One is the um, provincial bus ban policy, and the second is the single occupancy vehicle ban. As regards to the first, um, I think that uh, it has been reported that provincial buses represent only 3% of the vehicles along EDSA. So the impact of removing them from EDSA is not going to be that big. Where I think the provincial bus ban policy makes sense is to remove the, the provincial bus terminals from EDSA because those do cause traffic jams as they they, as the buses pull in and out of the, their terminals along it, so they cause many traffic jams. Um, and the second one, which is the single occupancy vehicle ban, I think is a good policy, but it comes at the wrong time. Uh, Dr. Primitivo Cal, who is a uh, transport engineer, uh, said that such a policy has to come in a sequence of policies. And a single occupancy vehicle ban comes at a tail end of this set of policies. On the, front, on the front end of these policies should be improving mass transportation. Because once you improve mass transportation such that it's convenient, efficient, reliable, then you will get a natural migration of people away from their private vehicles and into mass transportation. And when you do that, you reduce the number of vehicles on the road, private vehicles. And this is then when you implement single occupancy vehicle bans, you implement congestion pricing, uh, you increase the cost of parking in central business districts, you restrict the number of parking slots in central business districts so that you disincentivize people from using private vehicles, but, providing them, but provide them with a viable alternative, which is mass transportation. And so I would suggest to the MMDA that they revise their performance indicator uh, instead of reducing average travel times along major thoroughfares, what they should do is reduce the commute time on major commuting routes. So what they should do is measure, maybe they, they identify five of the most heavily traversed commuting routes, they measure how long it takes to commute, and then their objective is should be to reduce the commute time for these people. And when you do that, you address the needs of the 70 to 80 percent of the people who are commuting. And if you make, so for example, um, I did an episode where Congressman Rufi Biazan and I commuted from Fairview to Makati. It took us three hours on a bus. And if the MMDA can reduce that three hours to, let's say, an hour and a half, then someone who lives in Fairview would be incentivized to take public transportation because that's quicker to take the bus than it is to drive in a private vehicle. And that's what we actually want to achieve. So the MMDA should really reconsider its performance indicator. Well, that's it. That's the end of uh, another episode. I'd really like to hear what you guys have to say on this. Uh, so if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, please leave your thoughts and comments uh, below. Uh, otherwise, you can email us at rightofway at rathler.com or send us a message on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at right of way PH. Until then, this is Vincent, and I'm out of here. Stay safe on the road, guys.